My most loved, most praised video from this whole year was the Crock-Pot Chicken Tinga recipe video. So many people have asked me for more traditional Mexican recipes adapted for modern slow cookers that I know any follow-up would get a ton of love. So I tried developing a slow cooker pozole rojo recipe three separate times and failed miserably each time. Here's why. Pozole contains a sauce that you have to cook before starting, a meat that you have to braise for several hours, and then a third crucial ingredient that only needs to cook for half an hour. I thought, okay, first things first, let's get rid of the need for that chili sauce made from scratch. I heard that you can just use canned sauce. Wrong. The sauce from a can is oily, so it floats on top of the braise, never really infusing color or flavor into the broth. Plus, it's got too much acid, so it tastes tangier than it oughta. Okay, well, Better Than Bouillon just came out with a new line of products, and one of them is adobo. This is just a concentrated version of red chili sauce. You can dilute it with water and get there instantly. Wrong again. This approach had the same problems as before, and you need so much of the paste that you'd be spending 10 bucks on a product that could be easily made with $2 worth of dried chilies that ship way more easily than a heavy glass jar. Please, accept my apology. This cannot possibly be another recipe where you just dump everything into a crock pot and wait until it's done. But it can be really, really good. Take the biggest pot you've got and use it to sear three pounds of cubed up pork shoulder that was seasoned with three teaspoons of salt. A really luxurious pozole will also have ribs or feet in the recipe so that you get a super velvety mouthfeel from all those bones, but shoulder is the most accessible, so that's what I'm showing today. My grocery store only had shoulder in pre-cut steaks, which does make cubing easier, but did cost three times as much as a whole one. At least I got some nice bone pieces. If your butt's got bones, chuck it all into the braise with the meat and then fish it out later on so you get a little bit of that marrowy texture. Pour in enough water to cover the meat with an inch of headroom. The exact amount isn't that important. Let's call this four quarts, also known as a gallon. Leave the heat on high. It's gonna take a while to boil this much cold water, so take a moment to season it. Salt works, but a lot of cooks like to use chicken bouillon powder instead since it's salty and meaty. I'm one of those BTB pilled jar cells, so my choice is to season the water with one teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of chicken better than bouillon per quart of water. This is also the part during any typical braised recipe where you add aromatics like onions and spices and bay leaves, but pozole doesn't really need all of that because it gets its aromatic flavor from red chili sauce. I just put out a video explaining how and why you ought to keep a half gallon of the stuff on hand in your freezer, but here's the cliff notes. Take a bunch of dried chilies, tear off the stems, shake out the seeds, and soften them in a bowl of boiling hot water for 10 minutes. When they're soft, put them in a blender with any other aromatics and spices you want to infuse into the dish, a little bit of leftover chili water, and blend it until smooth. Strain out the pulp and you've got the sauce. I've got two cups of red chili sauce here and it's all going into the pot, but before you dump it in, you've got a choice. When your pig water gets hot and starts to simmer, a foamy gray scum will start floating to the top. People who like crystal clear, well-refined broths must skim this off before continuing with the recipe. People who prefer the richer texture of a less refined broth will instead let the liquid get to a full rolling boil so that all of that stuff emulsifies into the water. Words like scum and impurities make it sound like this gray matter is bad for you, but it's not. You can do whichever you want. And to prove how little it matters, I'm not even gonna show you which path I chose for this pozole. I'm just gonna cut to me pouring the red chili sauce into the hot water, popping the cover on, and letting that bubble away on a low simmer until the pork is starting to get tender. About two hours. After that, I've got red, brothy, braised pork. But it's not pozole until you add hominy, whole kernels of nixtamalized corn. I've also already published a video on how to make this from scratch. But in the same way that I wouldn't start a BLT recipe with here's how you make your own white bread, I wouldn't call for homemade hominy in a pozole recipe. The standard move is to open a can of Juanitas. It comes from a corn varietal that's big, white, and puffy called cacahuacintle. It's perfect for this dish. Unlike other canned goods that come in standard sizes like a 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk, hominy comes in 15.5, 25, 29, up to big beefy 110 ounces. That's the one that's right for a batch this big. Open the can, drain out the liquid, and rinse off all that canned juice. Put the hominy in the pot and baby you got a pozole going. The hominy comes fully cooked in the can, but it's good to let it sit in that simmering broth for at least 45 minutes so it gets extra soft and the red liquid has a chance to stain the white corn. Do be sure to taste for salt. I was a little conservative in the seasoning that this recipe calls for because I don't know how much water might evaporate during your cook or how much salt your hominy might contain. Give it a spoon-assisted sip, and yes, salt to taste. 
speaking of taste, I'm not even a soup liker. It's one of my greatest gastronomic shames. But pozole joins Olive Garden's Zuppa Toscana in the ranks of undeniable goodness. It's rich from being made of two different kinds of meat broth. It's warm in the literal sense, but also in the sense that dark, toasty, dried chilies imbued the whole dish with extremely cozy, figurative warmth. You'll find the ratios I use make for a corn-forward dish that celebrates the hominy, letting chunks of meat fall into the background as in every other spoonful treat. But pozole is highly customizable. Have the amount of hominy, double the amount of pork. As long as you've perfected the red chili sauce, the rest is just freestyling. If you've ever eaten pozole before, you know what really completes the meal are the garnishes. Thinly shredded cabbage or iceberg is a must. Same for diced white onions. You can soak the onion pieces in water for a half hour if you wanted to deflame them them and remove their signature burn. Lime wedges are always great to add acid to the rich broth, then radish and avocado are fantastic if you have them. Finish it off with some black pepper or ground up Mexican oregano so the steam carries that aroma towards your face while you eat. I see a lot of people eat theirs with tostadas on the side, but I was raised to keep a toasted bolillo roll on hand to soak up the broth. Maybe that's just more of a West Texas thing. It is true that you can portion this out into quart-sized deli containers and freeze it for up to a year, but I feel like it's way more in the celebratory spirit of the dish to make as big of a pot as you can muster on a lazy Saturday, put the whole completed soup in the fridge before a big party, and serve it to everyone for breakfast the next morning. Reheating pozole the morning after a rager, a wedding, or a quinceanera is so iconic that the act in itself is called the recalentada, the reheating not just of the broth, but also of the hungover people who are sharing it. Imagine this waiting for you and your friends on a hungover New Year's morning. When you prep the soup and garnishes two days before, it's all very easy to put together, even if you're bleary-eyed and cotton-mouthed. And what a nice way to get a bunch of tired people around a big table to tell stories of the night before or just exchange fun facts. Like, hey, did you know originally this dish was made with human meat? Yuck, how barbaric. Good thing we make it with pigs now. Yes, they're smart. Yes, they're a lot like us. But if there's one thing I know, it's that humanity's current state is the correct, most evolved one. So push those dark thoughts aside and enjoy some red, red soup. Mmm, yummy.